everyone, Teresa here. Welcome back to my channel, Lost My Thread. Today I'm going to be talking to you about everything I sewed in the month of October. I don't have a huge number of things to share with you today, but I do feel like I have quite a lot to talk about because one of them was a particularly slow sewing project. I will tell you first about the dress that I'm wearing now because it is one of my favorite things that I've made in a long time. This is the Nina Lee Mayfair dress. I have never used Nina Lee patterns before and I loved putting this dress together so I am really interested to look at more of her patterns. I feel like on the whole they tend to not be particularly my style though I do think they look great on other people but I'm going to revisit them now like I said because I'm so happy with how this dress came out and what it was like to put together. The fabric that I'm wearing is probably a big part of why I love it so much. So this is a really beautiful double brushed poly fabric. I'll show you what it looks like up close. As you can see, there's this really beautiful pale pink, bright pink on, on a blue background, these beautiful flowers. It is a very drapey fabric. As you can see, it's really got a lot of movement. It's really lightweight. It's super soft. It's double brushed poly is a fabric I've never worked with before. It's very easy to find in the States and in Canada from what I understand probably other parts of the world, but I cannot seem to find it in the UK for love nor money. I bought this when I was going back home to visit my parents in the summer in Chicago. So this came from Melanated Fabrics and I absolutely love it. I really enjoyed sewing with this fabric. It feels so luxurious against the skin. It almost has like a velvety texture, so that brushed feeling, and it's soft on both sides. And like I said, it's really lightweight, so it's lighter than a lot of the other soft jersey fabrics that I'm used to working with. It's a jersey fabric, so it's got tons of stretch, it's got four-way stretch, and it has been really surprisingly comfortable to wear. It's double brushed poly, so it's a polyester fabric, which worried me a little bit because I don't usually get on very well with polyester. I have a velvet polyester dress that I love the look of it and I really enjoy wearing it, but the polyester in my body don't get on very well. I get very sweaty, very stinky. Sorry too much information, but guys, it's the real deal. I was worried about getting this dress on and wearing it and having the same situation, but I don't know what it is, maybe because of the very fine nap that's there on the inside and it's maybe not right up against my body, it doesn't have the same effect. No sweat, no smell really comfortable. So again, sorry it's a little bit peculiar to talk about, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, and this fabric does not have that issue for me. So the design of this dress it is a maxi length dress. I think you can do like a midi length. I wanted to go for maxi length. There is some really beautiful detailing on this dress. So there's a collar. I'm going to show you some pictures, but there's basically some, some pleats at the back of the neckline that become almost like a collar going around to the front in this nice v-neck. There are some gathers at the waistline above and below the waistline with a waist tie that ties around the back, or you could tie it around the front. I tend to prefer it tied around the back. As far as the sleeve length, these are meant to be three-quarter length sleeves, and I did have them initially as three-quarter length sleeves, but I've been turning them up more to an elbow length, and honestly, the main reason for that is the hem for the sleeves is only one centimeter, and they keep rolling up, so if you've had this happen before, you know what I'm talking about. Jersey tends to roll unless it has a really deep hem, and it drives me a little bit crazy, so I've just been turning it up to elbow length, and I think what I'm gonna do is just add a thicker hem and make them elbow length permanently because I think it's, it still looks cute. I think it's a good length for me, but it's just not going to have that annoyance, hopefully, of rolling. The hem at the bottom of the dress is three centimeters, so it's significantly deeper and that doesn't move. I probably wouldn't because it's like a full maxi dress, but point is I, I am wearing them currently elbow length, but I have some pictures where I'm wearing them at three quarter length, which is where they were designed to be. I did raise the v-neck up by an inch because I was a little bit worried that it was going to be a bit too revealing and I didn't want to show any cleavage. I wanted to be able to wear this for work, including when I'm like leaning over and bending forward because I'm a midwife. I feel women's tummies. I go to pick their babies up. I don't want to be showing anything off that I shouldn't. I may have been okay not to raise the neckline, but I don't feel like it's too high and I probably will just stick with it to be on the safe side for my next make as well. It's always tricky to know where that balance is if you have a fuller bust. So like I said, I'll stick with what I did. As far as sizing, I made a size 12 in the bust 
waist area and then I sized out to a 14 at the hip. I may not have needed to grade out the hip, but I'm glad that I did. I really feel like it has a really nice silhouette and it fits my body really well. For reference, my high bust is 33 and a half inches, my full bust is 38 inches, my waist is 31 inches, and my hips are 42 inches. So technically the bust, I was going a little bit um, below my size that would be recommended, but I really wanted to fit in the high bust area, and I knew that this was designed for a B sewing cup, which is two inch difference between the high and the full bust. And because mine is a four inch difference, I actually sized down to the previous size that I knew was gonna fit my high bust area, because like I see there was quite a bit of ease in the bust I felt like I could get away with it you get these kind of gathers from the top and from the bottom that are coming from the design of the dress and I feel like it fits me beautifully so I'm really glad with what I did there and I will definitely make it very similarly again as far as the construction for this dress there was some really clever ways that this was put together so this is the bit that's making me curious to try more Nina Lee patterns because Looking at this dress, I would never have imagined it would go together the way that it did. And looking at the pattern pieces, I would have had no idea how to make this a dress if I didn't have the instructions. It feels like a very clever, almost like architectural engineering design for this pattern. It's really, really clever. So the things that are particularly unusual about it is the way that this back neckline is organized, just how you put it together. So you create these pleats at the very back, center back, before you join the neckband together at the back. But that's actually a part of this front piece. So this all connects from here up into the collar. And underneath the collar is the back piece. And you basically do like a burrito method like you would do if you had like a front or a back yoke. So the whole maxi dress, you can imagine, rolls up inside this burrito and then you need to just stitch along the edge of that burrito section. And it was really difficult to get that to go through my machine and not get stuck on the edges of it. I will say that it's probably a little bit easier to visualize when you're doing it yourself, but it came together and when I turned it right side out, it was pretty pucker. I will say it wasn't 100% perfect, but there's no way you can stuff the burrito back in once you've turned it the right way out. And so I do have a little bit of my initial stitch line showing just underneath my enclosed facing at the back, but I really don't care. I still think it looks pretty fantastic and it feels really great to wear. I really love the shaping that you get around this neckline. So you just have these little subtle, ga subtle, subtle gathers just at the top of the bust here. And like I said, you get a little bit of gathering underneath from the waistline as well. So the way she creates the waist gathers is also really unusual and quite cool. So you take a piece of clear elastic, stretch it really taut so there are certain points that are hitting the right spots within the dress. So there's some dots on the dress that you need to hit with that elastic. And you do a zigzag stitch along it. And then when you let go, take it out of the machine, it all pings back in and creates this really nice even gathers. And then you create your waistband and you just overlap it over that clear elastic and stitch above and below. So that way it hides where that elastic is on the front of the dress. And I feel like that's a really simple and easy way to get these really nice, neat gathers. And I think it looks really pretty. One other change I did make to this pattern is that I did lower the waistband by an inch and a quarter. I am someone who quite often has to raise the waist for things because I tend to, I think, be quite short-waisted in my body. But for this one, I actually had to lower it down. So what a lot of people said when I was looking at reviews is to try it on. So you're gonna have to put it on before you sew up the side seams, but you can just drape it over your head and then you can see where your natural waist sits and that's where you're gonna to wanna to put it. So I would definitely recommend doing that if you're making it for yourself. And I'm so glad that I did because like I said, I had to move it down a little bit and now it hits me perfectly right at the waistline. I do really love a maxi dress for like all out elegance. It feels so beautiful and so feminine. All these lovely details with the gathering are so nice. I feel so beautiful in this dress. It is one of those makes that I just immediately loved as soon as I put it on. My husband could not stop saying how beautiful I look every single time I put this dress on, including when I went to go film it. So I know that it's definitely a hit within this household. And I've had some good feedback on Instagram. So I think on the whole, it was definitely a big success. And I know I'm gonna love wearing it. The next finished item I have to show you is the one that I have probably the most to talk about, which is a coat that I made for my husband. So I'll show you what it looks like here. It is a classic lumberjack style jacket with this really nice fabric. I'm trying to show you without showing you any of the pocket details. There's a lot of details on here. It's this nice check. It's like a nice chunky check. You can see like by my hand for scale 
black and red. It's almost like a burgundy red. I do really like this shade. We spent a lot of time talking about directions of the plaid. We agreed to do like more of a diagonal at the, the pockets here. Got some welt pockets as well. So there were different pocket options for this one, but I like welt pockets because it's just kind of cozy to put your hand into and the welt pockets are huge. They're literally like, I can spread my hand out and that's how big they are inside there. Because who doesn't like a nice deep pocket in your coat? This coat came from my husband trying to find a winter coat last year. So this one's been a long time coming. He was trying to find a winter coat last year. Couldn't find very much what he liked. Everything that he saw that he was considering that he might like, the price was really pretty wildly expensive. And I said to him, this is one of these things where I think I could actually save us money by making you a coat. Would you want me to make you a coat? And then obviously I've got an excuse to do a bit more sewing, so I was not going to argue with that concept. He agreed for me to make him the coat, and we did buy the pattern and the fabric last year, over a year ago now, and I finally just got around to making it and finishing it up. It was one of those things where there was a lot of work going into it at the front end. So we ended up making a few different muslins, adjusting the fit, and eventually we got to a fit that we were like that we liked. And by that point, the summertime was coming. So I said, I'm just gonna wait until the autumn. You'll have it for next winter for when you particularly need it. But the design of this coat, it's it's I wouldn't say it's based on, I did a lot of personal adjustments to this one. It's based on a pattern called the Overshirt by a company called Wardrobe by Me. Again, pattern company I've never worked with before. Not one that I'm particularly looking forward to working with again. I'm probably not going to make any more of their patterns because I didn't particularly like a lot of the stuff about it. I didn't love the instructions. It was one of these pattern companies that will have quite a lot of instructions on a page with multiple diagrams and it's not always easy to tell what instruction correlates to which diagram which is just frustrating because just don't have diagrams if you're not going to make it clear there's no point in having it there you need to make it obvious that this image relates to this instruction anyway that was one issue with it but also I just felt like the proportions of it were really peculiar so my husband is somebody who generally is able to buy clothes out of the shop without any real problem and he fits them well, he doesn't have to do any particular, we wouldn't usually have to do particular adjustments when I've made him things in the past, but when I made this right out of the box with his size, it was just really overall too small. It was too narrow in the shoulders, too short in the sleeve, too short in the body, and wouldn't close at the front. It was like I'd made a size too small, but we'd done his measurements and it was supposed to be fitting him. So I started to just make some adjustments to those areas. I was thinking like, okay, well I can bring out the shoulders a little bit. I can lengthen it a bit. I can lengthen the sleeves. In the end, I made that muslin with all of my adjustments and it still just seemed really off. So I decided maybe I'll just size up. Maybe that's the issue. So we sized up two sizes compared to what his body measurement said. And in the end, it fit pretty well. I did still lengthen it by three inches, but I think that's just because this is meant to be an overshirt. We wanted it as a coat, so I want it to be relatively cozy. So I lengthened the whole thing by three inches, but I just made it two sizes bigger than him, and it fits pretty smart on. So the length of the sleeve was perfect, fits over the top. Part of why I went up two sizes rather than just one is because I knew that this was gonna have a lining, a thick lining inside, and I also wanted him to be able to wear it over jumpers and things when it's a bit chilly. So I feel like we got the right balance as far as the size not being too oversized, but big enough that he can layer under it and be nice and cozy in the winter time. So this is meant to be just a plain basic shirt with a back yoke, we decided that we wanted to line it, or I decided. I mean, this fabric was never going to be warm enough for a coat. We couldn't find a straight up coat pattern, let alone a lined coat pattern that really had the design elements that he was looking for. So this was the closest, so we decided to go with it and adapt it. As far as the lining options, we did talk through what we could do. I said quilting lining is an easy, obvious option, quilted lining rather. I thought about Sherpa lining or a fleecy lining, but he definitely liked the quilted lining the best. So I got this polyester quilted lining from the Fabric Godmother. So it came pre-quilted and that's on the whole inside of the body and inside of the sleeves. I wanted to make sure as well that the lining went all the way to the edge of these button placket. It's not really a placket, it's just buttons really. But I want it to go all the way to the edge just because I wanted to make sure that it was going to be nice and warm because this is a winter coat. Because I had thought a lot of 
instructions that you'll see as far as creating a lining for an unlined coat, you will just line it up to the edge of this facing, the front facing, but then that means that this whole section doesn't have any of this nice quilted bit. So it was a slightly complicated thing to put together. One of the big changes that I made was instead of the back yoke, I created a back facing that could be attached to the front facing when I was stitching it all in place. I created a little loop for hanging because who needs a, a coat that you cannot hang? So that was obviously gonna be included. I didn't have a back yoke in here at all. So what I did do is I took the back yoke piece and the back piece and I overlapped them by their seam allowance to make one continuous piece. I did add a pleat detail. Hopefully you can see in here, it's just a two inch pleat in the back here because I wanted him to be able to have movement and to be able to move his arms around, stretch his arms, that kind of thing when he's wearing the coat. That's something that's in my Kelly Anorak pattern. So I made the Kenny, Kelly Anorak by Closet Core Patterns and I thought that was a really clever detail and I love the fit on me. So I wanted to do the same thing for my husband. I mainly followed a tutorial by Seamwork Magazine as far as making the lining. So what they suggested doing was for the arm section where the arm attaches to the body of the coat, you make the lining piece sit half an inch higher than the underarm of the actual outer part of the coat. And that just means that they're not gonna be sort of bunching up too much under the underarms and you're gonna have free movement of the arms. And that worked really well. So I put a link to that little tutorial down below. Like I said, I didn't follow it to a T, but I followed it for that and it just gave me a good guide of the kinds of things I wanted to do to make it work well. There was a little bit of hand stitching going on on here. So this has a classic, um, you know, cuff here with a button. I did hand stitching to attach these sections together just here because I had basically made the outer part of the coat and the inner part of the coat and they had to become one, so I had to hand stitch them together. I also did the same at the bottom of here. At the bottom of the coat, there's a, a slit for a bit more movement. And so I hand stitched these sections together along here and I hand stitched them together down at the bottom, but I did do a little top stitching when I was getting the bottom hem band attached. So the bottom was meant to be just a little turned up hem of like three centimeters up and up again. I think it might have even been one and a half up and up again, so three centimeters in total, which was never gonna work over this bulky fabric, this bulky lining fabric. So I created some hem facings that I stuck on the bottom of that just to make sure that it was gonna be a nice chunky hem that was gonna look nice and neat. On the whole, I think it came together really well. My husband really loves it, which is, at the end of the day, what it's all about. I think it looks really good on him. Like I said, I'm really happy with the fit. I really like the color of it. I think it turned out really cool. And it's one of those projects that I basically spent the entire month of October on this coat. There were a lot of steps. I was picking my brain a lot because I was adapting the pattern so much. So it was not a straightforward make like so many of things that I do. So I thought that was all I was gonna have to show you by the end of the month. And I think I finished that on the 29th of October. So I thought, okay, that's gonna be that. But in the, in the meantime, I had cut out this dress. And I thought, mm, well, you know, I got a little bit of time here and there before and after work. Let's see if I can just whiz through. And this one came together so fast, I was really glad to be able to have a second full make to be able to share with you. As far as other things that I've been working on, I've also been working on a little bit of knitting for some Christmas gifts. So I don't think any of my work colleagues, anyone on my midwife teams watched my videos, but if you do, Turn this video off so you don't get any spoilers. No one needs any spoilers for Christmas. But I have been making some little, I, I'm calling mug cozies. I think there's other terms for these, but it's basically a little quilted, quilted, knitted, <laughs> straight up stockinette stitch rectangle that you put up into a mug. And I've got a little button loop that I've created. It's got this really cute little handmade with love button on the top. And the idea is that you put this around a hot drink that you're drinking. It will keep your drink warmer, but also you can put your hands on it to warm your hands up on a cold day. I thought these would be really cute. So at the moment, they are extremely basic. I am gonna add their initials and some little symbols for the teams that I run. So I manage two midwife teams and we're all named after flowers. One is lavender team and the other is dandelion team. So I'm going to put a little embroidered lavender on the lavender midwives mugs and little dandelion spores on the dandelion midwives mugs. 
watch this space and see how that goes because I haven't done a whole lot of embroidery but I am optimistic that they'll come out well. I have some yarn that I got from the Knitting and Stitching show. I will show you the different colors because I've knitted them all up by now so I can show you what they look like. These I all got done within the month of October as well, but they are something that I was doing more just as I was sitting around, hanging out with my husband, you know, for watching TV, he's playing video games, something like that, we're just hanging out. Then I was just working away on these, and so that meant that I was able to get them done in the time frame. So in addition to the color that I've showed you, I've got a few others, I'm just getting them ready to show you. So you can see these are the colors that I've got. So I did a bit of a combination. Some of them are just solid colors and some are a mix just because I wanted to use up all of the yarn that I had. But they are really yummy colors. I can't remember the name of the yarn shop or the yarn stall from the Knitting and Stitching show, but I'll pop it up on the screen because I know that I've got it written down somewhere so I'll be able to look at that. Or I'll be able to tell you when I edit this video. But I have a few more from different yarn because that wasn't quite enough to make the ones that I wanted to make. I know it's really early to start Christmas stuff, but I will say that for me, we're having a Christmas party with my teams on the 6th of December, so I don't have until the 25th. I've got a shorter deadline, but also I'm a slow knitter. I've never really done a whole lot of embroidery. I've done a little bit here and there. So these things are going to take time, and I do not want to end up in this like super pressurized situation where I've got all this stuff to do for gifts and not enough time to do it. So I feel like it should work out. I'm giving myself enough time that I can do it in more of a relaxed fashion. But I think these are going to be a really cute gift. Part of my plan is I'm going to give them a mug as well that fits it. And then I'm also going to make, they're called hot chocolate bombs. So they're little chocolate globes that are a sort of a thin layer of melted chocolate that you then solidify. And then <laughs> it's two halves of a globe, I guess. You fill it with some one half with some hot chocolate powder and then you fuse the two together. And the idea is that you take these little globes with hot chocolate powder inside them, stick them in a mug, pour some boiling water on top, stir it up, and it creates a hot chocolate. So I think that's a really cute idea, and I've been thinking of doing them anyway. My cousin, Laura, if you're watching, hello out there. My cousin made these last year, and they turned out really well, so she gave me a few tips of how they worked out for her. So I'm planning to make some of those. If you watch my videos in December, I'm planning to do a video a day as part of my Vlogmas series, so a daily vlog in December. You will definitely see me making these up because I'm going to have to get them made up to be able to give them out for Christmas presents, but they should be a fun project, and I think it will make an overall really cute gift without costing too much money. It's a lot to spend money on 10 people or 9 people in your life, so I didn't want to go too overboard. As far as other things I've been working on, I did also cut out the t-shirts for my Clash of the Patterns video series. If you haven't seen those videos, I will pop a link to the playlist, but basically I've been comparing three different shirt patterns to see which one I like the best. And I cut them all out and ready for preparation to start actually sewing them up. So I'm planning to start sewing them this month and I should get those done hopefully pretty quickly because they're just t-shirts. So I should be able to share the sort of final reveal videos of those coming up in the next couple of weeks. Like I said, I didn't have a huge number of things to share with you this month, but I feel like I had a lot to say about the things that I made. Most of that comes down to the fact that I did this real, I would call slow sewing project in making the coat for my husband. I'm not someone who necessarily feels like I need to be churning out tons of things every month. For me, it's about the sewing process and I enjoy the process and it's really satisfying to work on something that you're just gradually working through day by day. Sometimes those are the most satisfying projects. Let me know what your favorite slow sewing projects have been because I do really enjoy those really detailed, more complicated makes as much as I enjoy the quick wins like this dress definitely was. I will be back again with some more videos soon. I've got lots of ideas and things that I'm working on behind the scenes. So you'll be getting some good content coming out over the next few weeks. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you are subscribed down below. If you enjoyed my video today, please do give me a thumbs up. It really does help to boost my video up on everyone's feeds so that more people can find my channel. Thank you to all the people who have been subscribing. My subscriber numbers have definitely been creeping up. It's pretty wild and pretty exciting to see. And I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye.